Hello, a warm welcome to this special edition of Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Kriti Mishra, and in this conversation, we have with us Speaker of Meghalaya Assembly, Mr. Meet Baling Do. So, welcome to Rajya Sabha Television, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So before we talk about your state and the assembly, at the 80th edition of the All India Presiding Officers Conference, it was decided that the focus has to be more on northeastern states. What are your suggestions? Well, uh, I think this is the first time for me to attend such kind of a conference uh, where the chairman of the All India Presiding uh, Officers uh, is the speaker of the Lok Sabha and it is the first experience for me because I just took over as the speaker of the state assembly last year in September only. So I was fortunate that this is the first time you know, that I could attend and I could understand that uh, this is a very very important uh, platform where we f feel like uh, as the presiding officers of the states we feel that there is no platform for us where we can share our ideas, our thoughts, new initiatives. And today, I was uh, very delighted to see that uh, this platform has taken uh, some very, very important uh, you know, agenda right from yesterday being the first day of this conference on the, with regards to the uh, how do we take care about the harmony of relationship of uh, the legislature, the executive and the judiciary. I think this is very, very important uh, where we have seen on many occasions that uh, there are always a, a clash or encroachment of the jurisdiction of one to pillar to another pillar to another pillar. So I think um, it is very much, uh, you know, a need of the hour that one has to um, take a, you know, very uh, serious uh, thoughts on this. That uh, since all the presiding officers of different states of the country are coming together, I'm sure that, uh, you know, definitely will come out with some sort of solutions or new ideas on those three pillars of the Constitution. And at the same time, uh, we, are, we are very fortunate that uh, today, the 26th of November, being the Constitution Day, I think that is very much it coincide with the, you know, with the conference. So it coincides with the conference and uh, I think uh, this is the right platform for me which I feel that we can deliver. So I had uh, made a very short address. In fact, uh, I didn't prepare that much uh, to look into what are the other aspects which needs to be addressed. But however, I think I have specifically mentioned about the 10 schedule. Okay, the 10 schedule was in place, and but still there are some loopholes where the, the judiciary and the legislature plays a very, very important role. And in fact, these two bodies, these two institutions, in fact, are they are supposed to help each other, you know, how to sort out when it comes to any kind of doubts or interpretation, I should say, interpretation of the, uh, of the situations which are happening during those times. Right, sir. So that was about the theme of harmonious uh, coordination between the three organs of democracy. And what about Northeast? Because uh, there were discussions that we need to focus more on Northeast. Before I come to the Northeast, I think I would like to add up something about the 10 schedule. Um, I think we have seen and uh, on many uh, occasions, uh, especially in the state uh, with regards to formation of governments, we have seen a lot of MLAs, you know, who are in a different party you know, when it comes to in the formation of government and toppling of governments, they tend to move out from the party 
by resigning themselves and uh, again contesting for the by elections. I feel that uh, this need to be looked into very seriously, very seriously. Uh, I know up to what extent it will be very practical, but I would like to suggest maybe, maybe if any of the member of the assembly who have been elected from a particular party has to stay there in the party for five years, be it be it uh, whatever, whatever it is. But in case he happens to resign from the membership of the assembly or any you know, body or the council, he should not be allowed to contest again in this five years. You know, I think that should, otherwise you see that there is a mockery of you know, democracy. People have elected you. They have elected you from that party. And then again you come back. And then, you know, it, ha it has happened that sometimes they have been offered, you know, a ministership. You know, then he will contest the by-election as a minister. So, you know, that, I think, uh, that should not be encouraged at, at any cost. Because it will, you know, at the end of the day, it will... Uh, it will uh, cause the exchequer of the state. It will unnecessarily waste the time. It will unnecessarily waste the revenue of the state, of the election, you know, expenses and all. So these are the factors which needs to be looked into, and has to be examined properly. Now coming back to the northeast uh, as a, a region. Um, Again, as I said that uh, this being the first year, we were supposed to have what they call the East 3 uh, zone, uh, regional conference of the presiding officers. But because of this uh, COVID and because of the budget sessions that we had in all the states, so almost all the presiding officers, the speakers of the states uh, assemblies of the northeast region were not free at that point of time and then it has got postponed so that today in fact we were just you know together during a lunch time and the chairman of the presiding officers of the east three zone who was happened to be the speaker of the assembly uh, assam assembly legislative assembly uh, he has in fact uh, informed us that there will be uh, immediately in the month of uh, December, maybe the end part of December or January, um, to that we will be meeting and um, discuss accordingly, you know, with regards to the issues and not East as a region. I think we are a small states compared to the rest of the mainland India. Um, most of the houses are of. Uh, 60, uh, 80 or 100 at the most you know, for each assembly. So it's a very small number and uh, as I've said, the 10th schedule also plays a very, very important role here and uh, we had experienced that in the past for some of the elected members from one party, they resign, they join another party contesting as a minister. So it is some sort of a uh, the same issue that I was talking about that w needs to be looked into. So what are the specific suggestions of Meghalaya? Meghalaya in particular as of now I think uh, that is what uh, we don't have much but well when we will be in the platform I think things will come out you know exactly you know really about it. All right Mr. Lingdo now let's shift focus to Meghalaya State Assembly. Now I'm, I understand that there's a new complex that is coming up. Tell us more about that. Well, uh, as far as the uh, assembly complex, you know, um, the state assembly, you know, is owning a heritage building and which was got it to fire in the year 2001. So for almost, almost 20 years, the construction of the new building 
have been discussed from time to time, but uh, no decision has been taken with regards to the site and how to uh, move ahead with the construction of the building. But uh, fortunately in 2018, um, after uh, we came to power, so we decided that uh, the new building has to uh, be constructed immediately without any delay and which they have, the then speaker of the house, as I have said, because I just took over about a year ago and uh, prior to that for almost um, one and a half year, the then speaker, Dr. Don Cooper Roy, uh, has initiated and uh, the construction of the new building is in good progress as of now. But uh, today I have uh, uh, given a memorandum to the Honorable Lok Sabha Speaker um, requesting him to felicitate that how exactly the uh, funding or financial assistance can be extended with his initi you know, initiative to see that in what way exactly. Though I am not that aware whether funding can be directly from the Lok Sabha or not. But however, I have just given my memorandum to the Honorable Speaker of the Lok Sabha, Ms. Om Birla Ji, and he agreed, he said, I will uh, take some initiative on this and see how it can be done. Now, with regards to the building, uh, the progress of the work is in full swing. Well, as I have said, we do have fund constraint from the state government, but we intend to complete the construction by next year, December. Because in 2022, we will be celebrating our statehood, Meghalaya because we got a statehood in 1972. So 2022 will be the uh, golden jubilee of our statehood. So we would like to see the light of the day, uh, you know, in respect of the new assembly building. And uh, let's be assured that uh, bil the building will come out very, very nice. And uh, with everybody, uh, you know, on board, uh, they will be, I think, uh, if they are putting together, I am sure that we, will, we can definitely do it. So we hope that the first budget session of 2022 will be held in that new assembly building. As of now, we are occupying a temporary building of the arts and culture uh, within Shillong itself. So I do hope uh, that you have a spectacular building when you celebrate uh, Golden Jubilee of your statehood. But what are the new facilities that you'll have for the members? As of now, we are in the first phase. We are in the first phase. The first phase is the main building, the main assembly building. The second phase will follow after the completion of the first phase. So the facilities which will be available will be all the uh, bungalows or the quarters for all the uh, you know, MLAs, especially the speaker, the deputy speaker, and so on, the complex and all, will be in that same, same campus. We have almost about 80 acres of land, which belongs to the assembly, where I think about, about uh, 15 to 20 acres will be the main building area, and the rest of the area will be for those complex and other facilities which I have already mentioned just now. All right, sir, talking about the new normal now. During COVID, I understand that uh, Meghalaya had a special committee and uh, the speaker, of course, you were heading that committee. Mm. What were the developments? What was the focus? And what were the achievements? Well, I think uh, it was a very good experience for me. And uh, this is the first time you know, where all of us, it's not only me, all of us have to go through this pandemic. We never thought, we never dream, we never expect that this kind of uh, restrictions would be imposed on human life. And that you can't even, you know, touch something, you cannot even go out, you cannot 
even go for shopping and something like that. So, but what I observe is that, uh, that, you know, we have seen all over the world how the political, you know, uh, friends are playing the games for the political mileage, you know. But I feel and I was co fully convinced that this is the time that all the 60 MLAs of the Mekhalaya State Assembly, uh, Assembly should come together and be a part of the group to fight against this COVID-19. So I initiated a high-level committee headed by me as the chairman in consultation with the chief minister of the state and the leader of the opposition. So I form a committee uh, from the government side, the uh, chief minister, the deputy chief minister, the health minister, food and civil supply minister, the home minister, the, um, and then the uh, one or two more ministers. And from the opposition side, I call the leader of the opposition and with five, six MLAs. We would like to have more MLAs, more, you know, uh, ministers in the committee, but because of this uh, social distancing which has to be maintained and you know all the protocols which has to be maintained. So we restricted to these numbers of members in the high level committee. So basically the committee is like uh, we want to uh, discuss and get the updates from the government that what the government exactly is doing from time to time and what valuable suggestions that can be given to them, um, we do share in that high level committee. So I feel that uh, the success story of this committee was basically the number of cases, especially dead cases. Unfortunately, we lost about 80 plus. But when you compare to the rest of the country, the rest of other states, I think the numbers is very, very less. Losing one life is also a big and you know big thing. But losing 87, but when you compare to the situation which are happening in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, I think we we have been able to prevent, we have been able to save many lives of the people of the state. That is what the agenda of this committee. So this is also one thing. And over and above that, I would like to say that we through the committee we appeal to all the, the because we have a traditional headman, you know, in all the localities. They also play a very very important role. They play a very important role, and uh, it is the participation from the people of the state, it is the participation from each and every you know section of people that uh, who comes forward and you know be a part of the team. And uh, even till today, also, we are uh, still uh, few restrictions which are there. Now, if you want to come to Shillong, you have to be tested in the border. You cannot just enter like that. You know, I landed in Delhi, nobody is doing testing, anything. I landed in Ahmedabad, nobody is doing anything. So, but in Mekara, if you come in the border, you have to be tested. If you're positive, then you have to go for the quarantine. And if you're negative, then you at least now you can you can do that within five days time, but if you go more than that, then again, if I'm not wrong, you have to be on quarantine for about seven days or ten days time. So these are the steps like um, what we have taken at that point of time, and uh, we had a series of review. It is not only one meeting, series of review we had. After three four weeks, we had another review. After three four weeks, we had another review. So. We share those review, details of the reviews, the live reviews. We share with the rest of the people through social, you know, media platform, and uh, that updates them from time to time. So, talking about the committees, of course, uh, Chairman Fradi Sabha, Mr. Venkaiah Naidu, has always said that committees are extremely important. He has also brought in members to be present during the committees. He has also spoken to various uh, leaders of the political parties. In fact, in his speech during the 80th edition of All India Presiding Officers Conference, he said that these committees must be made more operational. As a speaker, talking about your state, what are your endeavours? One year time for me now in the chair as a speaker, 
Uh, I have observed a lot of things. There are committees where uh, members, some members never attend the committees. In fact, uh, we have, we have uh, taken note of that thing and uh, we would like to see that uh, those committees are really uh, active in nature and uh, or uh, I should say proactive in nature to see that the function of those committees has to be very, very, you know, in a proper way and proper manner. But they should also ensure that the jurisdiction of the committees also has to be confined within that parameters only. They should not go, you know, beyond the parameters or the jurisdiction of that particular committee. One should understand about the committees. But yes, as uh, uh, the chairman of the uh, Raja Sabha, uh, Mr. Bankai and I do, sir, has mentioned that these committees play a very, very important role as it, uh, you know, highlights, it reflects the performance of the government from time to time. In order to see that there is a transparency, there is a kind of accountability on the part of the members of those uh, bodies. And lastly, sir, as a presiding officer, the co biggest concern, of course, is smooth conduct of the proceedings of the House. What has been your experience in your state? I never uh, thought that uh, I'll be in that chair. Uh, and, uh, but uh, as far as the... It's a very good experience, I should say. You tend to, uh, you know, learn a lot of things in that process and uh, it is a very good experience and um, I think I'm very delighted. But uh, I would like to say that uh, the decorum, the dignity of the house, that has to be maintained at all costs. As far as uh, Mekhidaya Assembly is concerned, I feel, you know, to me, I feel as of now, I think we still maintain that dignity uh, and decorum of the house, no doubt about it. Yeah. And um, in this last uh, one year, after I took over, I feel that uh, the people should know what is going on in the house whenever the sessions are going on. This is number one. That's why we started immediately with, the, with our own assembly channel. I don't know whether other states have or not. I think maybe Meghalaya must be the one, the first one to have its own assembly channel. I don't know, maybe Delhi, Gujarat and other states do have or not. But we have started and it is, giving a, it is getting a very good response, very good response. And uh, the feedback which we are getting from the people of the, you know, who are on the, you know, online with uh, watching this uh, live sessions which are going on, and the other day, one fellow, he came and met me. He happened to be a businessman and he was telling me, Sir, he said, I was very happy. I, I, I saw your reaction. He, you know, he pointed out the very, uh, the exact, uh, you know, situations which has happened at that time. I said, what happened? And then how you come to know about it? He said, I was watching live. I was watching live uh, through uh, YouTube and uh, on Facebook. Uh, and they said, very nice. So this is what we would like to, uh, you know, tell the people and people should know what their members are doing in the house, okay, how the house is being conducted, what are the proceedings of the house, how the, you know, so these things, I feel that this is very, very important. We should tell the people, we should not hide anything from the people. People should know what we are doing in the house, what we are talking in the house. So one should be very alert, you know, at, any point of time to see that, you know, they've been watched. So I, I'm ho I hope that with that, the performance level of each and every members of the house will definitely improve. So that's a very important point that you've raised. I'd like to understand how do you operate this channel? See, on a trial basis, I we have given it on contract. We hire a team and uh, on a trial mode, so I give them about two months time, three months time to set up. They start setting up. So fortunately, we got the right team, I should say. We got the right team, and most of them, they are professionals. 
and uh, I didn't expect that they'll come out, you know, very well. I mean, uh, I was I was very happy, I was very delighted about the performance that they will do. Their one year term will be over by January, February, I think. So then I was telling them, unless you again you prepare the the performance report from your side, what you have done in the last one year. And but for me, I think we are very very happy, and we would like to continue with that. We'd like to see that that is has to be a permanent kind of uh, you know section in the assembly schedule where they would be keeping all the records, everything, you know, um, and that would can be extracted by anyone. It will be definitely put on the web and uh, anybody can extract those information. Alright sir, those were very interesting facts that you were sharing with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah, It's my pleasure to share. So, alright, that was Speaker of uh, Meghalaya on our show. That's alright now from me. Take care and stay safe.